Take Pause has been made possible by support from the following Community Foundation of Broward funds. And by Broward County Animal Care and Adoption, where you can adopt a new best friend for life. Hello and welcome to Take Pause. I'm your host Mike Moscatello and I appear to have made myself a friend. <laughs> and who couldn't use another friend? With any luck, this kitty will find itself a great new home soon. And speaking of which, once you bring a new pet home, you'll want to make sure he stays there. Dogs and cats have a tendency to wander. They just want to explore the world and make some new pals. But unfortunately, they're not always good at finding their way back home. Just in case your pet gets lost, there are simple precautions you can take to make sure your pal gets returned to you safely. What you looking at? Your friends? Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, pets get lost every day. And one of the big misnomers out there in the community is, oh, my pet's an indoor pet, he'll never get out, he never gets lost, or my cat is an indoor cat, it never gets out, it never gets lost. And that's a fallacy. The first thing people need to realize as a pet owner is that your pet always has the potential to get lost. It happens every day, and we get hundreds of pets in here that have become lost from home. A number of things happen. Um, a pet slips out of a door. Um, your lawn man forgets to close the gate. Um, a cat finds a crack in the screen and jumps out. Um, sometimes during a storm, things swing open from the wind. Your windows blow open, your doors blow open, or you might have to relocate yourself, and there's always a chance for escape. So as a pet owner, it should be the number one priority on your mind is to get good, solid identification on your pet. So if it does get lost, we have the ability to call you and reunite you with your pet, or if your pet just runs down the street or into the next yard, your neighbor or someone down the, the road or in the next block will see an ID tag and be able to contact you. So it's vital, it's the number one thing that you should do as a pet owner. If you do nothing else, you need to identify your pet. Every day at the shelter, we get pets in here that you can tell the pet parent they spend a lot of money on the pet itself. Could be a purebred dog, beautifully groomed, expensive grooming, bows in the hair. Um, you can tell the dog might know some tricks. It's obviously been trained, walks well on a leash. Everything was spent on this dog except a few dollars on a tag. And that's where it becomes unfortunate because we have no way of knowing who this pet belongs to. And unless the pet parent is diligent, and contacts our shelter and comes in and takes a look either on our website or comes into the shelter itself, we have no way of knowing if we'll be able to ever reunite this dog with the pet parent. So it's unfortunate. What kind of identification is key? Certainly throughout the United States and almost every county and municipality there is a required government issued pet ID license tag. And so that is critical. The main thing that's good about those tags is the fact that it confirms who the owner of the pet is. If you've come and you've registered your pet as the pet owner, it's just like your car. You register the car in your name, we know that car belongs to you if it's stolen. Same thing happens with the pet license. If somebody were to take your pet, steal your pet, or it becomes lost, we know for sure that Mr. Jones is the owner and not Mr. Smith. So that is vital. Um, second to that, that we strongly recommend is a microchip. Microchip is about the size of a grain of rice. It's embedded into your um, pet in between the shoulder blades, so it's permanent. Um, it can't be removed, so if someone were to steal your pet, take the tag off and take the collar off, um, they can't get rid of the microchip. Um, also, if your pet does get loose and somehow gets out of its collar, they still have the protection of the microchip embedded in them. 
What you need to do as a pet parent that is vital is that you need to keep that information current. You need to register the microchip with the microchip provider. And if you move or you change your phone number, you need to update the information. We get pets that do have a microchip. It all started out great with great intentions, but then the pet parent has moved two, three times. Now that information is worthless. So if you have a microchip, it's wonderful, it's great secondary information, but you need to make sure that the information that is tied to it is current. Phone number at least, at minimum, needs to be current. So we can contact you if the pet comes into our shelter or it's found by a vet or somebody else that can scan it for a chip. Third thing that you should do is that's also handy is to get a little name tag for your dog or a cat um, that has his name, Fido, on it and a local phone number. That comes in very handy because if your neighbor or somebody local finds your pet, they can call you up on your cell and say, hey, I have Fido if you want to come pick him up. I'm two blocks away from you. That's very handy also because then maybe your pet doesn't even need to come into the shelter. Um, a good Samaritan finds your pet and can call right away. So those are the three main things, the government issue tag, the microchip, and then also a little name tag that you can pick up from any pet supply store. That gives your pet a voice. Your pet has everything, it has your love, it has the grooming, it has the food, but you need to give it a cell phone. Just like you would your child, you want to protect your child, they, they can contact you if something happens or they need you. Your pet needs that voice, your pet needs that tag, so that way we can reach out to you and reunite you with your pet. People will call us off and say, oh, my dog keeps running away from home, you know, my cat keeps getting out, what am I going to do? Um, what you need to do is get the pet fixed. That's just the bottom line. You need to get your dog or cat spayed or neutered. One of the main reasons, the number one reasons dogs and cats leave home is in search of true love. And they escape from home just, just naturally through nature. Um, it is, you know, time for them to mate and this is what they do. If you don't have another um, dog or cat at home that can be their love interest, then they're going to go find one out in the neighborhood and that's why they get away. And that's why they're adamant about escaping from doors and windows. They're in heat and they're looking for the girlfriend or the boyfriend. Um, that's why your pet runs away from home and one of the number one things you can do to stop that behavior is to get your pet spayed or neutered. So we strongly encourage um, if you have a pet and you haven't yet gotten it fixed that you take the time to get it done. Research some of the local spay neuter programs in your community and you'll end up with a pet that is a lot happier, a lot healthier and will stay home and not end up in a shelter or injured or some other unfortunate circumstance. If you'd like to help support Take Pause through sponsorship or by making a donation, call 754-321-1000 or go to beacon.tv.